crime. The teenager known as the Barefoot Bandit was indicted in Seattle this week. Manhunts. Colton Moore has been on the run since he escaped three months ago from a group home on Camano Island. Crashes. Police in the Bahamas say the most wanted teenage fugitive in America was captured after crash landing a stolen plane. Today we'll tell the story of one of the most infamous thieves in modern American history who successfully evaded law enforcement for years while stealing boats, cars, and aircrafts. And the craziest part of all is that he was a teenager. An age-old tradition amongst middle-aged Americans is to complain about teenagers. They're often characterized as destructive, disrespectful, and in some cases, downright obnoxious. However, there is an individual who puts all these stereotypes to shame and makes the average American teen seem angelic by comparison. Our story today begins in the year 1991, in the state of Washington, when a boy by the name of Colton Harris Moore was born. Growing up in the town of Kameno Island, he was subjected to a rocky home life. When he was just a toddler, his father Gordon was thrown in jail for drug abuse. Although his mother remarried, his stepfather too would disappear from his life after dying when Colton was only seven years of age. After getting out of jail, Gordon would yet again abandon his son by choking him at a family barbecue. His mother didn't seem much better either. She was allegedly an alcoholic that seemed much more interested in hooking up with random strangers than taking care of her own son. Often drunkenly berating him and breaking his possessions. With no father figure and an abusive and neglectful mother, it's no wonder that Moore was known for causing trouble early on in his life. While some attempted to contact Child Protective Services to get help, these investigations ultimately were fruitless. With nowhere else to turn, Colton began leaving home and living in the woods for days on end, in an attempt to escape his tumultuous living situation. Coincidentally, the area Mr. Moore lived in was a popular spot for luxurious vacation homes, with many of those who owned them being gone for lengthy periods of time. He subsequently became known for breaking into these houses and stealing various items. At first, he only took things he needed to survive out in the wild, such as blankets, food, and water. He even once took this a step further and attempted to order $6,500 night vision goggles on a homeowner's computer after breaking in. Eventually, these antics attracted the attention of police, and by age 12, he began to accumulate numerous convictions for his crimes. But every time he was caught, he would just go right back to stealing again, with this pattern of behavior continuing for years. In 2006, though, this would change, with him being handed a three-year sentence for his crimes. In 2008, the now 17-year-old would escape from a halfway house for juveniles, further frustrating frustrating authorities and kicking off a new era of mischief for the teenager. At this point, Colton Harris Moore had proven himself to be a tragic nuisance. At a young age, he had already committed more crimes than most do in their entire lifetime. While intriguing, he was far from famous, with many of his crimes going unnoticed by those outside of his general community. But Colton would soon commit transgressions far beyond anything he had ever attempted before being propelled to national infamy and cementing himself as one of the greatest thieves to ever live. We'll learn more about his rise and eventual downfall after a brief word from our sponsor. Traditionally, a lot of subscription boxes included stuff that you would never use, but Bespoke Post has solved this problem. This is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands, and it's free to join. Every month, they introduce members to cool new products, outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more. And the boxes are based off a preference quiz that you fill out. Every box has around $70 in retail value, but costs only $49. And the best part of all is that you'll get a box assigned to you before it's shipped, and you'll get to preview what comes inside it to decide if you'd like to 1. Keep it, 2. Swap it for a different box, or 3. Skip the month entirely for no charge. What makes this so much better than any other subscription box is you only pay for what you want. The two products I personally enjoyed the most were the Destination Bag. This allows you to fit a suit, a shirt, shoes, and everything else you need 
need in one duffel bag to take on a trip. I honestly can't imagine traveling for a professional meeting without this in the future. On top of this, I was also sent the smoked kit. This kit allows you to infuse hickory smoke into anything you put under it, including drinks. So to try out bespoke posts for yourself and get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description and enter code GFM20 at checkout, or go to bespokepost.com slash GFM20. With his tragic background culminating in his conviction and eventual escape from confinement, Colton Moore was at an important crossroads in his life. His home situation was a mess, and there was nobody he could turn to for help or guidance. With nothing to lose and everything to gain, the young man would begin a crime spree unlike anything he had ever done before. He began to steal boats, cars, and most baffling of all, small aircraft vehicles. One incident that has become particularly notable is when he hotwired and stole a Cessna 182 airplane that was owned by Bob Rivers, a semi-famous radio DJ. The plane was found crash-landed on a Native American reservation miles away. He had allegedly learned to fly through nothing but flight manuals, DVDs, and flight simulator games. These offenses caught the attention of the mainstream media, with multiple national news organizations dedicating time to talk about the incident. The internet would soon catch wind of the team thief, framing it as one of the most incredible underdog stories in US history. You see, while he was a criminal, it is important to understand that Colton was far from being despised by the general public. In fact, there were many who considered him to be a modern-day hero. But why? Well, to understand that, we have to look at the cultural time period this took place. In 2008, America had just experienced one of the greatest economic crashes in its history, with most pointing the finger at the rich and elite's greed and negligence for the downfall. So with this, the story of someone stealing from the wealthy and evading the heavy hand of the law while being so young was just too sensational to ignore many began seeing him as a modern-day Robin Hood, bolstering his popularity and cementing himself as not only a legend, but a symbol of the people. T-shirts with his face on them were selling like crazy, and multiple online communities on platforms such as Facebook began to pop up to pay homage to the now-famous teenager, with one having over 60,000 members. Many began referring to him as the Barefoot Bandit, due to him reportedly committing many of his crimes without shoes. While this saga unfolded, Colton's mother was interviewed and asked to comment multiple times on how she felt about her son's antics. While well, one might expect her to be mortified by his crimes, she showed a surprising amount of support. When asked what she thought about her son stealing airplanes, she replied, I hope to hell he stole those airplanes. I would be so proud, but put in there that I want him to wear a parachute next time. With this, Colton's real-life GTA spree continued to grow, with him allegedly stealing multiple vehicles all across the country. In 2009, he would commandeer another small aircraft, this time taking it from an airport hangar and crash-landing it in Granite Falls, Washington. Later on, in May of 2010, he would leave a note accompanied by $100 in cash at a veterinary clinic with a note reading, Drove by and had some extra cash. Please use this money for the care of animals. Colton Harris Moore, aka the Barefoot Bandit. This further added to his mythos as a Robin Hood-like figure. A month later, police discovered a stolen Toyota Sequoia in Nebraska, the twist being that it was originally from South Dakota. Another incident saw a truck from Illinois end up in Iowa. These thefts, along with several other crimes, were thought to be the work of the juvenile swindler. Keeping in the theme of escaping via aircraft, Colton would steal yet another Cessna airplane, this time landing it in the Bahamas. Soon after arriving, it is believed he broke into numerous homes stealing various items. Out of desperation, they had raised his bounty to over $10,000, and were offering the reward to anyone who was directly involved in the shoeless stealer's capture. Ironically, this would only add to the legend around him. Of course, nobody can run from the law forever, 
And on July 11, 2010, the Barefoot Bandit was finally caught at Harbor Island in the Atlantic. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the young man did not go down without a fight. Attempting to escape from authorities, Colton had commandeered a boat that he planned to use to reach Cuba to escape the legal consequences of his actions. Police quickly caught up with him though, disabling the engine of the boat by shooting it and leaving him stranded. He attempted to steal another boat, but this ended up being futile after he ran aground in shallow water. With seemingly no way out of his predicament and surrounded by law enforcement, America's most infamous thief felt the gravity of what he had done weighed down upon him and decided to put a gun to his head with the intent to end his life. Thankfully, police did manage to talk him out of it and he was put into jail. Originally sentenced to three months in prison at a Bahama prison with $300 bond, Colton was saved from this fate after his mother wired the money for his bail to the US Embassy. However, this was only the start of his legal troubles. After all, he had been on the run for almost two years at this point and had accumulated quite the track record, and the United States government was eager to get their hands on him. After being released from the island nation's authorities, Colton was deported to Miami, Florida, where police officers along with several federal agents were waiting for him. Because the initial warrant for his arrest had been made in his home state of Washington, it was decided that was where he would first stand trial. It was a lengthy and highly publicized affair with more being moved from facility to facility throughout the proceedings. While initially pleading not guilty to his crimes relating to stealing various vehicles, Moore would eventually plead guilty to a seven-count federal indictment, being sentenced to six and a half years in prison. Although it may seem like this was the end of the saga, Moore's legendary status would continue far beyond his prison sentence. Around the time when his popularity was at an all-time high, a novel titled The Barefoot Bandit, The True Tale of Colton Harris Moore was released. Multiple documentaries would be made about Moore, including a 2014 Canadian movie titled Fly, Colt, Fly as well as another film titled The Barefoot Bandit Documentary, which was released in 2015. Colton would not personally experience any of this success, as all of the profits made from his story were relinquished as part of the plea deal. Although he would briefly make a resurgence in the public eye after endorsing President Donald Trump on his personal blog, he would not make any public statements regarding his arrest. In 2016, he was released from prison early and granted parole in order to do low-level clerical work at his lawyer's firm. While this was good news, his happiness would be short-lived, as his mother also passed away that same year. In 2019, his probation finally ended, with him now being able to leave Washington State to perform various jobs to help pay off the over $1 million sum he owed in restitution. In 2021, he appeared on a podcast where he seemed to regret his teenage life decisions. Nowadays, it appears that the once infamous thief would prefer to live a life out of the mainstream spotlight and quietly repay his debts in peace. So there you have the story of the Barefoot Bandit, an unfortunate tale of a smart young man who had a bad home life. And with that, I think I'll end the video here. So until next time, thanks for watching.